Hello, today we're doing Tales from the Road, Spooky Edition. <laughs> so I'm up in my bunk uh, all by my lonesome. Uh, we just got back from our, uh, not back, but we're at the terminal from our trip to New Mexico and Texas, uh, which I'll tell you all about in just a little bit. Um, so yesterday we were in New Mexico, oh god, I got a hangnail, we were in New Mexico and we had to uh, drop a load off at the Walmart distribution center. Uh, apparently, you know, uh, Walmart distribution centers, like they have a very strict time that you have to be there and, um, if you're it's it's just because they have live unload times so basically you go there um, you unhook your trailer you just wait for them to unload everything off of it and then you take your trailer with you it took them four hours and we thought it was gonna take them about an hour so we sat in the bay waiting um, we had plenty of time yesterday morning to like go get some tacos um, there was a Mexican restaurant near the um, uh, pilot where we stopped, or the loves where we stopped and took showers. Um, well, I think I, I took a shower. I don't know if Tim did or not. Uh, and then Tim interviewed me for his YouTube channel, uh, which I will link below if I know how to, uh, or link here or here. I don't know how to do any of this crap, so maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Um, but luckily the Walmart distribution center had a uh, taco truck. So I went to get some tacos courtesy of uh, Tim, allowing me to borrow 10 bucks from him, um, which I got some cash today to pay him back. But I uh, have a picture of the taco truck somewhere here displayed. Sorry, I'm a little loopy because it's, it's 2 a.m. and it's time to go to bed. Um, I don't have any pictures of the tacos because I scarfed them suckers down. Like, I ate them so quick. Uh, they were so good because I was craving Mexican food. I haven't had anything Mexican food related in like a long time since before I left for this whole trip, I don't think. So it was well, well deserved. Um, so after that, we went to pick up a trailer uh, filled with meat last night for Costco. Uh, or we went to go um basically trade out trailers like we took our empty trailer to this place in texas so we drove last night uh pretty much till midnight and we got there and the trailer was not ready for us to swap out so we dropped our empty trailer and then we got a um we got uh we we basically parked next to a uh railroad and uh, Tim, Terry, I always say Tim, Terry loves railroads and loves trains, so he sat up and watched them for a little while, and apparently I slept right through most of them, so that shows you how heavy of a sleeper I am. Um, but some of them woke me up, and, uh, that's okay, I mean, it was fine, I slept pretty good, all things considering. Um, so, anyways, I wanted to explain, like, so, I think I talked about the refrigerated trucks which they call reefers um and so just to give you a little bit more info about prime i think they're the largest refrigerated truck company or one of the largest ones in the united states um so they move a lot of like meats and produce and ice cream um and so i learned basically kansas new mexico oklahoma texas all that is like a big meat uh, producing industry area <coughs> and uh, so anyways yeah that was yesterday um, this morning we woke up I got to drive four hours this morning um, and I also wanted to explain like the safety features and how safe they at least ten uh, gosh Terry Terry is a very very safe instructor and I love that about him uh and i really appreciate he's trying to teach me to be as safe as possible um first of all you know we set the cruise on 60 miles an hour 
And so like on, even on highways where it's like 75, I think prime governs their vehicles at like 63 miles an hour anyways. Um, you know, unless you're like going downhill and, and you've got the, all the weight, um, causing you to go faster. Uh, but it's a very, very safe speed and it's a very, you know, calm, relaxing drive actually. Um, and I really appreciate that. Another thing is that the truck is equipped with like, um, basically like roll assist, which means like if you're taking a turn too fast and it senses that the trailer is going to roll or the truck is going to roll, it will like actually slow you down. Now, I don't know if this truck has it. I haven't even come close to like wanting to test that feature out, but they talked to us, talked to us about that in training. Uh, one feature that I do know this truck has because I've tested the limits of it is the lane assist, uh, which, uh, so basically in your upper left and upper right, there are like special speakers that if you're going too far over into the right lane, like there's a camera on the front of the vehicle. Um, I can't show you can't, you couldn't see it from here anyways. There's a camera on the front of the windshield. Um, at the top that will sense if you're drifting like into the other lane. And so like a little like beep, beep, beep will like happen if you're drifting in this lane or in this lane, depending, you know, which side you're on. Uh, so that's very helpful. And it does it before you get into the other lane, um, just so you can like co easily course correct or whatever. So, um, you know, I've definitely heard that a few times while I was driving. Um, and I've heard it when Terry's driving too, like, you know, it's, it's just a like added safety measure to make sure before you like drift into another lane, it's almost like the, um, you know, uh, gosh, I can't think of what they're called now cause it's too late, but the, um, the rumble, rumble strips or whatever on the right side of the highway that you'll hear. Um, but it's like, it happens before. Also the camera on the front will detect the vehicles in front of you and it'll tell you how fast they're going and it'll tell you um, how many seconds away from them you are. So that's super helpful. So, you know, we stay a good bit behind everybody anyways because we're going 60 miles an hour, but um, it's helpful to have the, the display tell you so you can start backing off because what'll happen a lot of times, somebody will pass you and then they'll cut over in front of you like really close and they'll speed up so you'll be able to see them like go away in your display and like you know in real life but um it's helpful uh just to be able to see that and so you can back off um and so that's good so i kind of just wanted to explain some of the safety features on the truck give you guys some peace of mind that it's not quite like as dangerous as it might seem a lot of the new trucks are like really equipped with good safety features um so one thing that I'm really struggling with is like looking so far out ahead, you know, with trucks having such a long stopping distance, like you have to really look far ahead. And, um, so I'm having to like retrain my brain to do that. And also train my brain to like be aware of trucks that are on the side of the road, um, with their hazards on so I can get, like, get over into the left lane. Uh, there's a few times where like Terry is, is so attuned to that, that he had to point it out like, you know, Hey, you know, a mile ahead, there's a truck with his hazards on, um, on the side. So you might want to get over and he had to do that a few times. So that's something that I need to watch out for and be kind of like cautious of. Um, sorry, I'm looking at notes too. I take notes for this stuff so I don't forget anything. Um, so we're, yeah, so we drove back to Missouri tonight, um, and then we'll be on our way to Maryland to deliver the, uh, meat that we picked up and we have to be there by Sunday. Today is, it is, um, technically Friday morning at 2 AM. So we got two days to deliver. Um, and then we have to deliver part of it, part of it to Maryland on Sunday and part of it uh, to Connecticut on Monday. And then after that, uh, my trainer has home time, uh, and he's, he's going to Homestead, Maryland. So I'll tag along with him and, uh, probably, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm kind of on my own 
for a day or two. Um, he said there's a bunch of cool restaurants within walking distance and stuff. One thing that might happen is um, I reached out to my friends, the Waltmans, um, who are like good friends from like, you know, 15 years ago or so. Um, and they live in Washington, D.C., which is maybe about an hour and a half from, uh, from where I'll be in Maryland. So we might meet up, you know, 45 minutes either way. Um, you know, I might catch an Uber or something like that. So that would be fun. Uh, let's see, notes, notes, notes. Um, so Terry drove for a little while um, after I took like a, I took a 30 minute break to get some food and then some guy needed us to move our truck. So Terry just took over. Um, I got, I got a Subway sandwich. Subway sandwiches are, are beginning to, you know, kind of become a, a nice little healthy option. Um, so yeah, so then I took over at like eight and drove till midnight. So that's another like four hours or so, maybe a little more. I drove almost nine hours today total, um, which is, you know, like you're only allowed to drive 11. So I'm still, still two hours shy of how far I was allowed to drive. And I think I did pretty well. Like I would have been, I would have preferred if it was like a straight eight hours in a row or like eight hours with a 30 minute break because it was kind of tough to drive like first thing this morning when I woke up and then like at the end of the day when I'm like tired so it felt felt like a really really long day because while Terry was driving too like I was up in the front seat so it's pretty much kind of like on duty all day um you know so I'm a little tired right now I had to tell Terry that his talking was distracting me while I was driving um, and he took it really well. Like I was, I was a little worried. Like he is a very verbose person. He knows a lot. He talks a lot about stuff like, and part of it is me. Like I'm very used to solitude, especially driving. And I'm used to like silence. Um, a lot of the times just like lately, you know, I've been by myself for a long time. Um, so I'm not used to somebody talking so much. I'm also not used to like um, somebody that cares about, like, the details of other things that they're not necessarily involved with, like, you know, he's, he's a very interested person in a lot of things, and I'm a very, like, and I explain this to him, too, like, I feel like I'm a very cynical type person right now, like, I don't, I don't really care what's going on with other people and what they're, you know, what other companies are doing and what, you know, other people say and other people think and all that like I'm just kind of like staying in my own lane um but he's very interested in like just like from like a um you know like a interested third party point of view like because a lot of he believes like a lot of what he's interested in affects him uh personally which it probably does I mean I don't know like he knows a lot about the business of trucking the business of you know food production he was a lawyer um you know he has a lot of a lot of uh kind of a a, a vast array of knowledge across a, a bunch of different subjects and stuff and he likes to talk i mean he's just you know he's a naturally talkative guy um so i'm having to like adjust to that a little bit and you know it's not a problem uh but i did tell him today and i felt so bad because i was like it was, and it was, wasn't really like, it was a snap call because I, I, I had not seen, like I said earlier, a truck that had its hazards on that was on the side of the road. And he was in the middle of talking while like, I didn't notice it. And I was like, well, you know, I was like, honestly, like it's hard to focus on so many things at once, like while you're talking to me and like explaining all this stuff. And he was like, okay, okay, that's fine. Sorry, just getting readjusted. And yeah, he was totally cool about it, but I'm normally not like confrontational, so I don't like stuff like that. Um, but you know, he was cool. Uh, yeah, he, he had this story about like this guy at a Chinese restaurant, like he was eating at a Chinese restaurant and he overheard, you know, this guy calling 
and you know complaining about you know, something and trying to scam them and stuff like that so i'm just like i don't know it's just not sort not the sort of thing like i would pay attention to and remember and like and recall and like tell later to other people who have no idea like who these people are or anything like that but that's just me i'm like i kind of like like i said i stay in my own lane um so when we got back we had to get the trailer service so we dropped that off because the abs is not working on it um and we also washed the truck which i will show you a video of like going into it's basically just like a big giant version of like an automatic car wash that you would know um so it is two uh it's 2 30 now so i'm gonna lay down i'm gonna sleep until about nine uh we only have about five hours to drive tomorrow so that's not bad um i imagine terry will probably drive at least first and maybe the majority of it um I might get a haircut tomorrow. So I was gonna grow my hair out and my beard out to be just like trucker, uh, trucker creepy looking dude. Actually, I was kind of gonna go for like the Dave Grohl look, um, but I really hate uh, having like my hair over my ears and you know, scraggly beard. So I'm gonna go, they have a, a salon here that opens at nine. Uh, so I might run in there and try to get cleaned up. So next time you see me, it might be clean, clean Logan, fresh Logan, instead of tired, hairy, messy Logan. So anyways, thanks for watching. Oh my gosh, I've been talking for 17 minutes. I think Terry's starting to rub off on me.